Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. It is a rainy day today, but I'm working underneath the roof of the greenhouse, so I'm keeping dry. Today I'll be working on my little cedar spirit tree. This is a root over rock composition, and in June of this year, I was working on the roots, sorting them out, growing over that rock, and then I applied a thin layer of moss to cover up the roots, and now I'm going to be working on the top of the tree. This tree is inspired by the real life little cedar spirit tree, a sacred tree that grows on the north shore of Lake Superior. Just like the real life little cedar spirit tree, this tree is to look like it's beaten, beaten down by everything mother nature can throw at it, and yet it's still survived. So that's the look I'm going for, a very twisty, weather beaten tree. When I'm pruning this tree, I'm not looking for nice smooth flowing lines to make the tree look beautiful. I'm after angles and abrupt changes in direction, things that make the tree look like it's really weather beaten. I also don't want this tree to grow long and lush looking. I want to keep it tight and compact, like it's just barely surviving. I'll rotate the tree around so you can see it from all angles before I start the pruning. So here's the front. There's the left side, the back of the tree, the right side, and back to the front. Before I start the pruning, I'm going to look at my reference photos of the real life little cedar spirit tree, just so I get that idea of the tree in my mind, what it looks like, and that'll influence my styling or pruning on this tree. The styling of the tree in nature kind of reminds me a bit of the cathedral style. There's three main branches that come up and on the top of each branch is kind of its own canopy. So there's kind of like three balls of foliage at the top of each of the three leaders of the tree. So kind of like an old growth cedar. Uh, the trunk is really gnarly and twisted and contorted on the real tree. Mine is nowhere close to that kind of age and look, but we'll work on it over the years. The little cedar spirit tree in nature doesn't have any branches this low down. Most of this is coming from a branch that starts up here. I'll show you that. Right here, there's a branch that comes off the second thickest trunk and it kind of bends downwards. It's a cool branch. Um, it's a little low, like this foliage is a little low. If I did prune it off, I would keep the dead branch on there for now anyway. I hate to kill off branches, so I might just prune it back short, removing most of the foliage on it, keeping just a little to keep the branch alive. We'll try that for starters. Okay, let's have a look at that hanging branch. Here it is here. So, yeah, it's an interesting branch. I'm going to start just by shortening everything up on it. Shortening all the foliage and then we'll have a look at it. A bit of uh, dead foliage in here, I'm just cleaning out. Yeah, so off of, you can see, there's a branch here, one of the third trunks, the the least thick one, the skinniest one. There's a lot of branches coming off down low near the division. I don't want those, so I'm going to take them off right now. This isn't the hanging branch, these are other branches. So that all comes off. So that cleans out this division here a little more. So there is still another branch coming off of this trunk, kind of down here at this level. And again, I think it's just too low. So I'll take some of it off. That upright shoot. 
Yeah, I just think it, it's too low on the tree. My foliage should be starting up way up here. Well, I'll leave a bit of it. I'll leave a bit. I'll just make it more compact. Why don't you kill a branch off? It's pretty well gone. So I hate to do it, especially this early in the tree's life. You know, if the tree was 20 years old, you kind of had the styling design set, then you might, you know, confidently, confidently kill off a branch. But at this point in the tree's life, I mean, it's only been a few years in training. I don't really want to do that. There's a branch growing up. I'm going to take that off. I'm just... Yeah, I, I don't think that branch is a keeper. It's interesting the fact that it bends down, but... It's kind of low. Well, I'll keep the part of it that's growing towards the back. I'll take this part of it off. Like that. Quite a bit off of it. To keep it kind of growing in the back. And I'll shorten this. Prune it all back. Make it compact. And then maybe at the end of the day, I'll have a look at it. And if it's just not working. Maybe it'll get removed. So that leaves a kind of a little compact branch there, which isn't the worst of the world. So the idea is to get a compact kind of foliage pad at the top of each branch. So I'll just work work away at the tree, making it more compact. I've got a branch up here. I've got some older foliage back here. It divides out here and it's got some healthy green foliage at the tip. I do want to reduce it back. So if I prune it back to this older foliage, I might be taking a bit of a risk, but I don't think so. I think it'll be fine because it's a strong branch and it's on the apex. So I am, I'm going to take it back to here making it a lot more compact. A little bit of a risk, but it should be okay. Some very vigorous branches here. Here's another branch that's quite long. I've got a division up here with healthy green foliage and then a strong tip cascading down. I could remove that tip develop these two. I think I will because it is in the front view it's hanging down in front of the tree so I don't want it blocking the view of the trunk so I'll take it back for now and I may I may even take that branch off in the future. Here's another kind of long branch coming off to the side that needs to be reduced. I've got some good foliage back here Take it off here. I really enjoy working on this tree because it's such a unique looking tree. It's kind of a cool style to experiment around with. See? Well, I can't wait to see what it looks like years and years from now. It'll be an interesting tree. I'll put a link for the playlist for this tree in the description below so you can follow it right from the start. See what was done to it, what decisions I made on it. Someone asked, you know, is this a good time of the year to be pruning Thuja trees? I think it is. Uh, the season is almost done, so they'll be shutting down for the winter soon. After the pruning, they just have enough growing to kind of repair all the wounds. Then they'll go dormant for the winter. And then all that energy that's stored up in the tree over the entire summer, in spring it'll all flush out with new growth. So 
it, it's a pretty good time of the year to be working on these trees pruning them up so this main leader here it, it comes up and there's a branch off to the left hand side here there's not much coming off this direction you know except for this branch here so behind it I have off this third trunk the skinny one I've got a branch kind of coming over in this direction which kind of fills that space in I've got to decide do I want that or not do I want to keep a bit of open space so these branches will grow over that direction I think I think I do I, I think I want to take this one off and grow you know all the foliage for this skinny trunk back here so I will I'm going to take it off shorten it dramatically here to there taking that branch off I will get more light in here too which is always nice now I wonder if we look at this branch here let's get a close-up of that here's a close-up so you can see I've got two branches coming off of it and then I've got this one that kind of comes up and then fans out here this tree I'm not looking for flowing lines so I might want to take that off at least this would be kind of you know it space the canopy over in this direction to get a little more light to each of the three trunks so it's not growing in the shade of the other ones kind of growing up the middle so I think that would be good to take that off now do I prune it off flush or make it sort of dead wood I think I'm going to try dead wood at first so I'll just kind of prune the branches off like that and we'll just kind of do a bit of scissor carving bit of pulling with my fingers here pulling that live vein down so it looks like a branch tore off which it basically did probably should be using my hands more for this pruning okay I'm just going to get rid of that kind of knot up top here pull that down a bit yeah like that peeling that back so it gets a bit of character in that part of the branch that looks good I like that and I'll shorten this part of it to just take that tip off and the tip off here yeah I like that so I do want to encourage more branching in this area on the front trunk so I think you know if I there's lots of light getting to this part of the tree these branches will grow out into the light so I'll just reduce some of these back a little further yeah, I think to here. Bit of pinching of the tips. Keep it compact. There's a branch coming off that skinny one that's getting a little wild and interfering with the other part, the other trunk back here. So it'll need a bit of pruning too. Just removing some of the branches that are growing straight up and some that are growing to the inside of the tree. Take that off there. This off here. Pinching here. Oh, that's a lot better. Much nicer. There's a hanging branch here. Coming to the inside. I don't want that. Yeah, these branches are kind of important to balance the tree a bit. Definitely keep some of those. There's one growing on the inside here. I'll take that one off. A little bit of pinching here. I've got a dead trunk up the middle here that hasn't been carved at all. I think that needs a bit of work. It's just cut off. I don't know if you can see it from this side. Yeah, right here. 
there's a stump that just comes up so I'll do a little bit of carving on that peeling of the bark just so it looks a little less like it was cut off and more like it was ripped in a storm or something there we go that looks good there's a lot of branches coming from one spot on this area so I've got to clean that up otherwise you get kind of bulbous bulges in the tree Take some of these vigorous branches back. Take this one off on the inside. And maybe... Yeah, I think the back branch is good. I think it's this top branch that needs coming off. Like that. So there you can see it from the front now. Looks quite nice. Hanging down a little low, starting to interfere with the branches below, so I'll pinch off the tips, make them a little more compact. Now it's growing very, very well on the tip here. There's a lot of branches. There's probably 10 branches growing out from that one spot. So I've got to pick, this is the front, I've got to pick what I want to keep and what I want to get rid of. Well, there's a double branch here. Two growing ladder branches, one above the other. I'll take the smaller one off because it's on the inside of a curve. That one's gone. Like that. Vertical one here I can take off. Uh-oh. Zombie apocalypse. It started. Okay, still really, really healthy up top here. Um, let's look at it from the front. Mm -hmm. So this trunk line kind of runs parallel to this back branch, so I kind of want to break that pattern. I don't want the two trunks going off the same direction. So I think some hard pruning is in order. And this back branch is a little high. I kind of want this as the thickest branch. I want that a little more dominant. So I'm going to prune the whole top off here. I've got some great branches here that fan outwards. There's one on the inside that's growing. So I think I'll take it off right here. Now, do I make it dead wood? Yeah, I do. So I'm going to leave a bit of a stub and we'll carve it a bit for dead wood. Because the more dead wood on this tree, the more convincing it'll look. So all this comes off. Really changes the look of the tree, I think. So there's my stub now that I need to carve back. Hmm. I don't know, that stub, it, it's still the same angle as this. I you think even if it's dead wood, I don't think it looks good because it continues that line off in this direction. So I'm gonna take it off flush. I just don't like that. Like that. Yeah, I think that's much better. I, I really like that a lot more. Now up top here, I've got to make a decision here. I, I've got this, it, it's getting quite tall. I'm not sure I need this branch off to here. You know, I've got a lot, I've got another branch. Again, you know, this trunk line's running this angle and then I got this branch at the exact same angle. Two parallel lines, it doesn't look so good. So, I can either, sh either shorten it or remove it completely. I could definitely shorten it to here, but I 
think I gotta get rid of it. Like that. I've left a little shoot there that might grow. There's a branch going to the inside here. I'll get rid of that. I kind of shortened the apex down. I've still got, uh, there's a rocket branch sticking up here. Could I take it off to shorten it? Yes. I could remove that entirely. And I will. Like that. And then there's one sticking up here. I can shorten that right back. And I think this one could be taken back too. This one can be taken off. Like that. This is just to make it more compact in the canopy now. Pinching the tips back. That way you don't get these long straight sections without any sub branching on them. It helps to kind of shorten them back a bit. I think I think I might be done. I'm stepping back, having a look at it now. I think it certainly looks more tree-like. The foliage is a bit loose right now. It's not very dense, so once it starts growing again, it'll fill in a little more and yeah, so it won't look so sparse looking, but I think the basic structure is not too bad. I think maybe, you know, as it fills in up top a bit, maybe some of those bottom branches can be killed off or pruned off to get the canopy a little higher. The trunk, it still has, you know, a bit of inverse taper in that, but I think that'll improve in future as the roots thicken up and around the rock and that. And, you know, it doesn't really matter on a tree like this. There, it's not a, the tree is meant to look battered and inverse taper just kind of adds another character to it. I, I think, you know, if you get too powerful a root base and a tapered trunk, the tree starts to look, it starts to look thick and powerful. And this isn't what that tree's about. It's, it's about a tree growing at the edge of a lake on a rocky, rocky shoreline that's just barely surviving. So I think you don't want it looking powerful. You, you want it to look, have some fragile qualities to it, I think. And I think the tree does. It doesn't, you know, it looks like a strong wind could damage the tree or, you know, yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm quite happy with it. I, I think it's looking good. And I think those roots have, you know, they're doing really well planted over that rock with just the moss covering. The trees stayed healthy all summer. So, yeah, and the, the roots, they can't grow much above the surface of the rock because it's just moss. So I, I think you'll see as the roots thicken up, it'll really give the appearance that it's gripping the rock. And I think that'll be, well, I think it'll look quite unique uh, someday when the roots are exposed. I think it'll look very powerful. Here's a look at all the foliage I took off the tree. Quite a bit compared to what's left on the tree. Every time I work on this tree, I get excited about it because I just can't wait to see it become a really old ancient tree in the future. I think it's gonna be really cool. I'll spin the trunk around so you can see maybe some more of the details on the trunk. So here I go. You can see the original trunk was broken here. It was stepped on and the tree was folded over. All kinds of features on the trunk. It's really cool. Now back to the front. really enjoyed working on my little cedar spirit tree under my greenhouse canopy. And that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.